the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And University in Baltimore, Maryland, where from 1873 to 1877, Blessed Michael McGivney was a seminarian, graduating in 1877 to go on to found the Knights of Columbus, to be a faithful parish priest, to become a saint. I want to offer a special word of welcome to all of you who are joining us through the miracle of live streaming, especially members of the Knights of Columbus who are able to be with us virtually today. St. Mary's was founded in 1791 at the request of Bishop John Carroll, the first bishop in the United States, when he invited priests of the Society of San Sulpice to come to America and begin the work of seminary formation for priests for the United States right here at St. Mary's Seminary and University where that has been continuing ever since. A special thanks also to the Knights of Columbus for a gift of a sacred relic of Blessed Michael McGivney that will be received by St. Mary's today and which will be a focal point of our prayers for his continuation along the road to sainthood. And finally, a very special word of welcome to Archbishop William Laurie, the ordinary of the Archdiocese of Baltimore, and who, in the Sulpician tradition, is the first superior of our house. I'm Father Phil Brown. I'm the President Rector of St. Mary's, and it's always a great pleasure and a great joy to have the first superior house with us to celebrate a very special occasion like this. Uh, thank you, Father Brown, for your very, very warm welcome. If I might add to that welcome a word of explicit and special greetings uh, to the Baltimore seminarians from St. John Paul II Seminary and Mount St. Mary's Seminary, who are also watching by live stream, as well as uh, Knights of Columbus and their families who will be joining us uh, today as well. And dear friends, gathered now together in the name of Christ, let us beseech his mercy so that we might celebrate these mysteries with worthiness and with joy. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of eternal mercy, who set your priest blessed Michael in the church to comfort the suffering and the weary, the lonely and the oppressed with works of charity and a gentle heart. Grant that through his intercession, we too may become vessels of mercy in our day and so enter into our heavenly inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the Revelation. I, John, looked and there was a white cloud and sitting on the cloud one who looked like a son of man with a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand another angel came out of the temple crying out 
in a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud. Use your sickle and reap the harvest, for the time to reap has come. Because the earth's harvest is fully ripe. So the one who was sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, who also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came from the altar, who was in charge of the fire, and cried out in a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, "Use your sharp sickle and cut the clusters from the earth's veins, for its grape for its grape are ripe." So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and cut the earth's vintage. He threw it into the great wine press of God's fury. The word of the Lord.
remain faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, I'm delighted to celebrate this Mass of Thanksgiving for the, beatif for the beatification of an alumnus of St. Mary's Seminary, a quintessential parish priest and the visionary founder of the Knights of Columbus, Blessed Michael Joseph McGivney. How grateful we are to the God of all holiness for the gifts of nature and grace which he poured out upon Father McGivney. How thankful we are to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for authorizing the beatification of this holy priest who completed his priestly formation at St. Mary's Seminary, then on Packer Street, and in 1877 was ordained by then Archbishop James Gibbons in the Baltimore Cathedral of the Assumption. Father McGivney was less a theorist of holiness and much more its practitioner as he allowed the seeds of holiness planted in his heart at baptism and nurtured in his seminary formation here at St. Mary's to germinate amid his many duties as a parish priest in New Haven. Indeed, the cornerstone of his life as a priest was charity. The cornerstone of the Knights of Columbus is and remains charity. He was a priest of immense pastoral charity, and in founding the Knights of Columbus, he ensured that his fledgling order would dedicate itself to the works of mercy, the charity of Christ that is expressed so beautifully in the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes that form the heart of the Sermon on the Mount. As Pope Benedict reminded us, the Beatitudes are like the Savior's self-portrait, 
And so anyone aspiring to holiness will exhibit those luminous qualities that Jesus perfectly embodied and exemplified. And so today, I present Father Begivni through the lens of the Beatitudes and present him to you as the priest of the Beatitudes. This is the priest we long for. This is the priest the Church needs today. And so it is that when we hear Jesus say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, we immediately recall how Father McGivney gave up everything to serve the Church, his time, his energy, his health, his resources, taking very little in return and giving of himself until his last moments. In 1886, when Father McGivney preached his parting sermon at St. Mary's Church in New Haven, parishioners openly wept because Father McGivney had given himself to them so completely, to them and to the Lord and to the Church. Even while living in this world and engaging in a busy parochial ministry, Father McGivney already shared in the kingdom of heaven, namely Christ himself. When Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, do we not recall how Father McGivney mourned over the plight of families that had lost husbands and fathers and breadwinners? Do we not find him often beside the bedsides of dying parishioners, many of them young, sharing like a good shepherd in the grief and sorrow of the people he served? So too we find the young Father McGivney walking to the gallows with the condemned Chip Smith and being deeply shaken by his execution. Now in eternity, the Good Shepherd himself comforts blessed Michael McGivney. When we hear Jesus say, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land, we call to mind how those who knew Father McGivney personally described him. A fellow priest spoke of Father McGivney as a man of unassuming character, who sought not fame or clerical advancement, but only the opportunity to serve. Precisely when it became apparent that the Knights of Columbus would succeed, Father McGivney stepped back from the limelight, continuing to support the order, not as the Supreme Knight, but rather as a holy priest who sought only the spiritual and material well-being of his beloved knights and their families. Today, Father McGivney's legacy, his inheritance, numbers millions of men and their families whom he put on the road to holiness. When Jesus says to us, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied, we can almost hear Father Begivney's distinctive voice in his Church of St. Mary, exhorting his beloved parishioners to lead a life worthy of their calling. We can almost see him lovingly but firmly, firmly steering young people from moral danger and by his example, encouraging all those he met to open their hearts to God. In leading others to righteousness, Father McGivney attained to that holiness which opened his heart to the only love that satisfies our deepest longings. 
when we hear Jesus say, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. We find ourselves in that jail cell where with loving perseverance, Father McGivney brought about Chip Smith's conversion and thus ushered a condemned man to the throne of God's mercy. As a parish priest, Father McGivney heard thousands of confessions and in those moments of grace helped his parishioners to experience the freedom and joy that comes when we accept God's mercy. When Father McGivney appeared at the gates of heaven, no doubt many were waiting for him there. The many he had led to open their hearts to the fullness of God's mercy. And Jesus says, blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. We recall that Father Begivni led a life of temperance and chastity, building on the sense of modesty that he learned at home and flowering into a life of chaste celibacy for the sake of God's kingdom. As he was departing from St. Mary's Parish, the parishioners offered him this resolution, and I quote, that Reverend M.J. McGivney has, by his courtesy and kindness, by his purity of life, secured the love and confidence of the people of St. Mary's. For this same reason, the church is utterly confident that blessed Michael McGivney now shares the vision of God. Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will, call, they will be called the children of God. And so we are reminded that in the early years of the Knights of Columbus, Father McGivney found himself at times dealing with some very difficult personalities, as well as with the pride and jealousy that seemed to be a part of every noble undertaking. By all accounts, Father McGivney responded to those challenges with disarming humility, a persevering charity, tranquility of spirit, and a wisdom that lent him the authority he needed to settle disputes, restore peace, and keep the Knights of Columbus on track. For this, we acclaim Blessed Michael McGivney as a beloved son of the Eternal Father. And when Jesus says, blessed are those persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the, is the kingdom of heaven, we recall how Father McGivney was unjustly criticized, even by his fellow priests, as he labored long and hard to launch the Knights of Columbus. In some quarters, Father McGivney was regarded almost as a laughingstock, and in others, it was thought that his project posed grave dangers for the life of the church. Father McGivney's response was neither anger nor recrimination, but rather steady determination and focus, confident that if it were God's will, the Knights of Columbus would succeed, maybe beyond his fondest dreams. From his place in God's kingdom, blessed Michael McGivney now rejoices. Blessed Michael Joseph McGivney, a priest of the Beatitudes. If ever there were a proposition easy to demonstrate, it has to be that one. Having lived the Beatitudes so thoroughly and consistently, Father McGivney led his parishioners to holiness and continues to provide for parish priests a pattern a model for the renewal of priestly life, a renewal so urgently necessary and so earnestly desired by God's people. 
St. Mary's Seminary, where Father McGivney was formed for the priesthood, continues its mission of raising up a new generation of priests, good and holy priests capable of being missionary disciples, good and holy priests who can bear witness to the saving love of Jesus and form sound communities of faith, worship, and service. Through the intercession of Blessed Michael McGivney, may we be and become priest of the Beatitudes, those priests in whom the image of Christ shines through so clearly. Blessed Michael McGivney, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now, with utter trust and confidence, present our petitions to the Lord of life and of love. For all members of the Church, may the Holy Spirit strengthen us in our efforts to be living signs of God's mercy in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, especially in those nations beset by conflict, let us pray to the Lord. For those burdened by hardships, may they experience freedom through God's healing grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all priests and seminarians, and for all those who continue to be touched by the ministry of blessed Father Michael McGivney, may they be guided by his example and enabled by God's grace in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Knights of Columbus, may, through the intercession of Blessed Father Michael McGivney, they continue to grow and be effective by God's grace in their ministry and their promotion of unity in the Church and among her people. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially those in our Book of Remembrance, may God gather them into the Kingdom of Heaven this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, let it be your mercy that listens to these our petitions and in your goodness guide us to desire only what you desire. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed upon your altar in commemoration of blessed Michael Joseph McGivney, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on this festival of blessed Michael McGivney, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with their blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, blessed Michael J. McGivney, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. That the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate this day in honor of blessed Michael McGivney, that we may persevere in integrity, the gift of faith, and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we uh, prepare to depart, I know that uh, this Mass is uh, really the final event of your in-person togetherness during this first semester. I ask God's special blessing upon you and upon your families as you return for Thanksgiving and indeed upon uh, seminarians everywhere who during this challenging times uh, are, per are persevering in, in their call to serve at the altar of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lord. your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God.